Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the Keyword Crypto Podcast with Michael and JJ. Follow us, KeywordCrypto.com, and on Twitter, at KeywordCrypto and at KeywordCryptoJJ. Check out our Patreon page if you'd like to support us, and let us know on social media if there are certain guests you'd like to hear on the show. And with that, enjoy. I won't talk shit, but um, <laughs> there's a thing that happens on Twitter where like everyone's got these crazy personalities on Twitter. And then when you actually see their content, when you listen to their podcast or when you see their YouTube channel or whatever, it's like incredibly boring and there's no flavor to it. And then you get us. <laughs> and then All you get... flavor, no substance. <laughs> well, we're like the opposite of the... We're like the, we're like the Big Mac of, of podcasts. <laughs> Tastes really good, but you're eating fucking cardboard. <laughs> Maybe. No, no, no. That's being self-deprecating. And we don't do that on this show. We don't. We don't. No, we are not self-deprecating at all on this show. No. And <laughs> funny thing is, is that Charles has a new podcast series. We're promoting it right now called crypto is depressing yeah. which is pretty awesome <laughs> but his show is kind of exactly what we don't don't want to be and just talk about how shitty everything is yeah, we actually exactly because th th let's face it things are shitty um but we want to like you know we at least want to you know put some icing on the shitty you know the funny something. thing is is i mean if you've listened to this podcast you know that i'm like the most depressing person when it comes to politics and and poor people being oppressed and you know like all like the you know the the oppression of the of the elite of the one percent, but I actually come to crypto to kind of avoid all that, just so I can like talk shit on Twitter and have fun on this podcast, not really have to think about it too much. And I try I to rein myself it. in, but it's always like I can catch myself when I go on some fucking rant, and I'm like dead yeah. dead dead air from JJ after I stop. <laughs> crypto is an opportunity for all of us to be idiots. Basically. Yes. And it's wonderful. I mean, no one really like Craig Wright. <laughs> we like you know we have we have uh, we have our own lives that we live that don't include crypto at all, and that's great. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's important. It's important to have a life outside of crypto because, I mean, it's important to have a life outside of anything that you do or have fun with. You know, it's like keyword crypto. <laughs> it's important to have a life outside of crypto. That that just that sounds like a Charles the ETH. Uh, t tweet right there. Yes. Well, I mean, that's yeah. we just found the name of the show, so it's, it's important. <laughs> it's important to have a life outside of crypto, and you know, you should hang out with your mom or something, something yes. like that. Call your I mom know. once a week. <laughs> um, Keyword crypto. Call your mom once a week. <laughs> okay, so this episode is kind of ad hoc because yes. we had a guest and that fell through. So it's just the two of us. We Sorry. had a privacy guest who then left a very cryptic private message. <laughs> yeah. The the problem with these privacy these guests that are advocates for privacy is that they're very hard to get in, they're very hard to get a hold of. And they're very hard to find information about. To yes. Ask, to ask like pertinent questions. Yeah. I went to this person's website and it's like seven words and then it asks for your email and I'm like, this is so Right, dystopian. I know. <laughs> I know you want. You, I want to learn about your your privacy crypto project, and you want my personal information <laughs> first. Yeah. So, um, anyway, if uh, you know, if I think privacy is one of the most interesting and elusive. Oh, no pun intended. I guess it, <laughs> it's one of the most elusive things. Like we don't quite understand how it works in crypto, and because so, it doesn't. Because right, it doesn't, yeah. but but you know, if you're a fan of this podcast or if you're brand new or whatever, and you have questions about that, hit us up on Twitter at keyword crypto and at keyword crypto JJ. Um, let us know what your qu questions because next week we're actually going to have a crypto privacy expert on the show. Um, uh, and so yeah, if you have questions, let us know. Yeah. Because wow, we have a bunch, like, how does it work? And why do we need it? And all those things. And, you know, well, I you mean, to, to jump back to what I said, it doesn't work. Nothing really works yet, 100%, right? No, privacy. I mean, as far as I understand it, no. And it's, it's, um, I mean, I, is, mean, is, I, I feel like Monero's the, the most stable and secure, but I, I hear rumors about that always not, not being 100%. So I'm just never sure about, like, is crypto truly 
I mean, I guess it kind of is. I mean, maybe Monero is. Okay, so there's no way, there's really no way to make Bitcoin um, anonymous. Like, you can not attach your uh, personal information to your public address, right? But you have to shuffle that address so many times if it does get associated with any of your personal identity. Yeah. So there's really no such thing. And using sophisticated algorithms, you could probably triangulate who people are even if they have an ounce of identity associated with their crypto i mean that's how the fbi and cia catch people and nsa catch people that's how they caught the russian hackers so in in other words crypto is probably a totalitarian wet dream of sorts because they can actually keep tabs on everyone i know i never understand libertarians when they talk about freedom and they say let's use crypto which is completely trackable by the government yeah so um like, what so that's our starting point for the interview that we're going to have next week is kind of like i mean we we understand the importance of privacy that's the whole like edward snowden thing we need to actually care about it and we need to we need to let our government and the rest of the world know that privacy is a right and it's something that, you know, we should all advocate for. But how does it work? Right now, the U.S. dollar is probably the most private currency you can use. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, again. Which our, is the reason why I can see smaller authoritarian governments wanting to get rid of dollars entirely and can go completely digital. Because it's like keeping, well, yeah. chap, keeping tabs on their people. Yeah. So what is going on in crypto today? Craig, Wright, are... Craig Wright apparently got a delivery in the mail. <laughs> okay. All right. Are we going to talk about this? Let's Might as well. This. So this is one of the most fun things about crypto is this wacky movie, this Craig Wright, the movie. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think like if you were new to crypto right now, when you jumped on to Twitter and you were like, wait, what does Jim Friend have to do with Craig Wright? <laughs> has to do with like... Carbon you know, base getting kicked off Twitter. Car car have to do with like Venezuela and uh, <laughs> Zimbabwe. Like what, what the fuck is going on? This place is crazy. You guys are all nuts. And who is Crypto Cobain? Like all this shit just doesn't make any sense at and, all. And why is this dog with sunglasses giving me advice? <laughs> giving yeah. me financial advice? <laughs> I lost all my money because I listened to a dog with sunglasses on Twitter. Um, um, yeah, I... We shouldn't talk too much shit about other content creators. It's not something I have a oh, bad habit of doing. No, I know. I I mean, no. we we tease Crypto Dog or whatever his name is, but I follow him, and it you know it's, it's funny. Yeah. And I yeah well. I mean, we uh, uh, we made the joke last time. Like like whale, whale panda, one of the magical crypto friends, talks a lot of shit on Twitter. So I don't feel. Oh my god. And I talk a lot of shit trolls. back to him. And dude or woman, I don't know. Still hasn't blocked me, so kudos to you, Whale Panda. Wait well, for way to oh, way Whale to Panda be a grown is, up. He's part of the Magical Crypto Friends with Samson Mao and Fluffy yeah, but Tony. I've never listened to it. So I don't know if there's a if there's oh. a woman in the in the group or, is it, or it's <laughs> yeah. all just fucking dudes. They're all dudes. Oh, they're God. they're they're all dudes, and then and then they criticize trolls for being sexist. It's like you know, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Anyway, they are the most boring uh, cartoon show on the internet, and I said that I wouldn't talk shit about other content creators, <laughs> and here I am. Uh, and and their their BTSE token is an example. I, I, we shouldn't start talking about that because I don't know enough about the token. I just thought it was ironic that these guys who are Bitcoin maximalists associate with one of the dudes who is responsible for Monero being what it is, yeah. So it's like, are they Bitcoin maximalist, but but XMR is okay, and then and Bits is okay. Bit and then Litecoin. I mean, isn't Charlie? Lee? Yeah. I don't know. It's so weird. It's so it's so like weird. Bitcoin maximalist or toxic mass uh, maximalist. By the way, toxic the word doesn't mean anything anymore. Just so you know, you can use it for anything. You can use it for like, you know, breakfast cereal. It just okay. it's me meaningless. Good to know. Good to know. Um, but like you've got Samson, uh, who is you know basically a troll on Twitter, and then calls himself a maximalist, and then he's got all these friends who are parts of other projects, and then they have a cartoon. Yeah, where they sit around and talk. And his girlfriend runs Bitsy, 
right? Yes. So it's like, <laughs> and then yeah, it's just one it's of those just, things. Whenever there's a, whenever I love there's how a none of them are actually power. none of them are actually promoting Bitcoin anymore. Like, no, you gotta. Well, it's Blockstream. You gotta promote Blockstream. And I guess. I guess. I guess. I mean, it's they make a, it so hard to like Bitcoin. They make it so hard. Yeah. Yeah. And. You know, we we do our best on this show to have people from different perspectives. So far, we haven't had like a really awesome B casher yet. And I would like to talk to somebody. Maybe we can get Roger to come on here. Roger, or get your ass on the pod, man. You know, come on. Who so knows Ro- Roger? Does somebody listening know, know Roger? Tell Roger, him to come on our show. I will say, Roger, my uh, my opinions about you have changed. And I I used to hate listening to you because I felt like it was... There was always so much self-interest in everything that you were doing related to Bitcoin Cash. But now when I go back and listen to a lot of those interviews and I listen to a lot of your talks, you actually make a lot of sense. And, act- and, I, and I understand that what you believe in is, is a potential future. And so I like, I like that. I like that you had so much, you were so rational about it from the beginning or I don't know if you were rational yeah, at the beginning, not, but like, <laughs> I, I would like to talk to you because you make a lot of sense. That's all. That's all I got to say. Yeah. I mean, it def- I'm not going to say it makes a lot of sense, but he makes some good points. I don't when, agree with half the stuff he does, like burning his passport and stuff like that. But like, well, yeah, that, that's stupid, but, um, but, I yeah, but make a statement yeah, there's def- I mean, my thing is, my thing is it's great to care about all those things like large, like bigger blocks and, and, and low transaction fees and this and that. But if your decentralized cryptocurrency is super centralized to achieve those things, then at, then what's the price? Then you're just kind of a bank at that point. And so, so that's what I'd really love to give him on the, on the pod to talk about because, um, yeah. And, and I know how much JJ loves when I say the pod. So I'm going to keep saying the pod over and over again, oh, multiple times. <laughs> We owe so much to our Apple overlords for <laughs> creating the word pod. Um, so, yeah, when Bryce Weiner was on our show and he talked about the genius that Jihan Wu is and the Bitmain behemoth, yeah. it, I did some more reading and I was like, man, this guy actually is, he is, I don't know if Jihan is like um, like a evil supervillain or if he is a savior because of what he's done. And so I, I, yeah, I just, it, when you go back and well, man, this is how, this is how silly crypto is. You can go back and rewatch some of the crypto movie from, from 2016 and 2017 <laughs> and you find things that you missed, you know? Yeah, you need so. to start documenting the stuff that I missed. That way I can, <laughs> uh, well, I think I was randomly one night I couldn't sleep, so I did that thing where I was looking at Twitter and I was, um, I was, I w- I started like following somebody that I just generally don't follow, um, uh, Adam Meister. He was like a Bitcoiner from long time ago. He's this kind of eccentric dude who does a lot of interviews and has a podcast, and and he had this one one um, interview with Roger Ver that he he republished recently but it was from 2017 early in the year okay back before most people knew who Roger Vera was and bitcoin cash wasn't a thing yeah. i mean people who knew who he was because he was a huge proponent of bitcoin yeah he was and, the biggest evangelist probably yeah around biggest and a hardcore voice. libertarian but but before bitcoin cash it was going to be called bitcoin unlimited and um and hearing him talk to adam meister uh adam was framing this interview like trying to make trying to basically say roger if you get away with this and you get put in prison then then bitcoin will fail you are setting yourself up as satoshi of this new bitcoin unlimited ouch I, and i thought that was such a that such a vicious way to have an interview mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, man, that was 2017. It was even more of a Wild West where you could basically do that. Yeah. feel like, yeah. That's yeah. crazy, it, man. So, so there's that interview. It's not, a, it's not a particularly interesting interview in that there wasn't a whole lot of new information. But it was kind of cool to go back to something that I think I had listened to in 2017 and thought was bullshit. 
and then to listen to it now with a different perspective. Why did you think it was bullshit back then? Well, I just, well, because I thought Bitcoin Cash was kind of a cash grab. I thought it was just somebody trying to pump his bags, basically. I didn't understand the scaling debate. Gotcha. And, and I didn't understand, um, I didn't be, it's, this is the classic thing. And it's one of the things I talk about on this podcast all the time. Our, our, our view of the personalities in crypto clouds our judgment and it clouds our understanding of what the actual technology does and what the actual ideologies do. So back then I thought Roger Ver was kind of like an evil villain himself. And he, I thought he was completely self-interested and I thought that what he was doing was not good for the world and not good for crypto. And I didn't like his libertarian idiocy. And so everything he said back then just sounded like bullshit. Yeah. But now when I go back and listen to it, and I think, okay, now now that I understand a little bit more about how scale, scaling in crypto works, how the block size and the block limit, and but, but I and I don't understand that much that much more, but I do understand that that's an important thing about how to how to adapt Bitcoin to the new world. In fee structure, apparently, you don't know about fee structure either. <laughs> oh. Uh, wait, was that before we started but we'll, recording? We'll, yeah, but we'll get into it next week. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's no, a, I, that's a funny story. <laughs> yes, fee, okay. Man, you're going to make me digress. That was, that was an inside joke. <laughs> that was a JJ. reference that nobody listening <laughs> no, is going to understand. None of, you'll understand next week. I and mean, we did oh. that with Nako. We referenced Nako. And, <laughs> and then we're like, oh, yeah, and you'll hear that interview next week also. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Anyway, what was he talking about? Uh, I was saying, so the personalities really cloud our understanding of what this stuff actually is. And most people back then were thinking, and it's the same thing happens now. Back then it was like, I don't like Roger Ver, so Bcash must be a scam. Yeah. I don't like Richard Richard Hart, Hart, (laughs) so Hex must be a scam. I don't like Craig Wright, so BSV must be a scam. So so let's jump into, let's segue into BSV and Craig Wright, because I do have questions about what you were talking about with Roger. It's the sense of like, so JJ and I have been talking to developers and listening to developers, and, and JJ pointed it out first. And then I've kind of noticed too is a lot of developers from Bitcoin are quietly moving over to BSV and they're building on BSV because there isn't like this conglomerate that stops people from building on on BSV like there is on BTC. So like Blockstream pretty much from what I gather, now this is just, you know, a pleb um a plebs yeah. version of the of 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 what I'm hearing is that like Blockstream kind of blocks people from building on Bitcoin, and and the meme that you hear in Twitter and everywhere is, oh, you know, we can just do all that on Bitcoin. Like, why do we need if why do we need smart contracts? Why do we need this? Why do we need that? We can do all that on Bitcoin. And you're like, okay, well, it's been 11 years, and no one's doing it on Bitcoin. There isn't a single thing running on Bitcoin right now that works. You know, people are like, oh, Lightning Network. A, a study yeah. just came out last week that, that I tweeted that one third of all Lightning Network transactions fail. <laughs> really? Wow. One third. Okay. So uh, 11 th- years later, there's not a single thing running on Bitcoin that, is, that can be called successful. And I so, just want to say, well, go ahead, finish what you're going to well, say. Well, so like, I, you know, so they, they have Tether that runs on Omni, but has like zero liquidity and zero, like no one's using well, now it. Now it's Ethereum, right? Yeah, yeah. And so now Tether's, and so Tether moved over to, over to Ethereum, and it's like no. the one of the highest grossing. Um, it's the most transactions. Yeah. And so, so like, if you keep on claiming that stuff can be done on Bitcoin, but nothing ever gets done on Bitcoin, you're just setting yourself up for complete failure. And, um, oh, what's the word? You're going to make your own, you're going to make your own cryptocurrency obsolete if you don't let anybody build on it. And so I think that's where Bitsy came around. They're like, oh, we need to have something works, you know, working. So let's have one of our insiders build on it. We'll <laughs> let that insider build on it. And then, but not let anybody else build on it. It's like so a proof of concept. Yeah. everyone just starts moving over to BSV. So, but my cool. question about BSV is, if you have these gigantic blocks, 
And, you know, Bitcoiners say this, well, it's like, oh, you need like 17 terabytes just to run mm -hmm. a node on, on BSV. It's just like, okay. So that makes it centralized, yeah. That's true. Yeah, so it's going to make it centralized. So it's like, so what are we doing? Are we just kind of creating a new centralized internet, more or less, that runs on BSV that only rich people can confirm the transactions because they're the ones who can actually run nodes and and mine? And are we just like enslaving ourselves to a new god or whatever? It's just like... Right. That's my fear of BSV. Because it's great, but it's great that all the developers are going there actually building on cryptocurrency, but... Well, hold on. So, first off, I don't actually know if there's a ton of developers leaving Bitcoin for BSV. Some of the... the I have noticed, in general, a lot of the kind of more verbal developers on Twitter making it known that they are that they're shifting their focus. But as we also know that probably some of the best developers are not the ones that are talking on Twitter all the time. So I don't yeah. want to be giving out a bunch of fake news and saying, hey, we're all going to BSV now. True, um, true. If you, are, if you are a curious engineer and you want to actually build stuff, it makes sense to move to a platform like Ethereum or BSV, which actually gives you a language to work with yeah. and like actually gives you tools that you can... And support. I mean, yeah, and support and and like you know that has really. I worked on a on a project related to BSV, and although I wasn't a developer, I thought the community was great. It was very supportive. I liked it. I didn't have any sort of. I didn't let my ideologies or my, I, I yeah I didn't let my opinions get in the way from learning get in the way of learning about this and the community, and the project, and that was cool. So I like that. So I, I don't want to say that all all these developers are leaving, but I have noticed that there's a lot more fun to be had in BSV, and there's a lot of developers saying, "Hey, I'm going over here because there's just more we can do with it." Now and the scaling, the sorry. scaling debate, the scaling debate is a serious thing, and we need to have that conversation independent of what personalities are behind each of these cryptos. Yes. So when you make the block size larger then you do make it harder to mine or you make it harder to run a node so that means that that means that you're going to you're going to centralize oh, you need a very powerful computer in order to support the network basically and so that will centralize the that will centralize, centralize the network now there are many people that believe that the block size should get infinitely large over time that bitcoin should keep forking until we basically don't have a block anymore. We just have one big block or something like that. I don't really know that, but <laughs> that, well, I mean, I've heard, we've heard Daniel Krawitz on, on the show say that. Yeah. So there is that belief. I mean, where is it supposed to end? Are we supposed to have a certain, a certain block size and a certain, I mean, who knows, but that's, and it's something that Andreas Antonopoulos talks about all the time. Like Bitcoin doesn't do privacy very well right now. But it will. Like, Bitcoin doesn't do smart contracts until it does. The internet didn't do this until it does. Bitcoin doesn't do anything well right now. Yeah, so so the idea is that it needs to adapt. Well, how do you expect Bitcoin to adapt without forks, without contentious forks? Yeah. So that's and what we are And how do you expect it to adapt if you don't allow people to develop on the, on the network? Yeah. So basically, everything everything in your head about which tribe you're a part of, just like set that aside for a minute while while you figure out what the future is going to look like. You know, like let's actually, you know, Michael, you've said on this show like the best money will win in the end. Like the best the best money is going to be used as money. Yeah. So if that turns out to be Bitcoin Cash, okay. Yeah. I don't I don't understand enough of the differences when it comes to like block size the difference between bitcoin cash and bitcoin sv i know that bitcoin sv um has i mean you can actually build on it it can actually support applications so that's what a lot of people are doing you know yeah. twitch and money button and all of these things if you guys um, don't if you're on twitter a good guy to follow is jason smith and he's at i wear a hoodie and yeah. he was a big BSV shit talker and then somebody called him out 
Or I think he made a bet. I forget what it was. No, he's a he's been a big time flip flopper in kind of the best way. Yeah. Because he was and we'll have him on the show because yeah. he was a business owner in Australia that needed to pay his employees overseas. And Bitcoin was just frustrating the hell out of him. And and then uh BSV was the best solution for his actual real life hair on fire problem. Yeah. Bitcoin was the solution. Bitcoin SV was the solution. It worked for him. Well, I don't see how that was the solution because if well, you I need mean, to pay somebody overseas, you don't want to use a currency that is banned by almost every single major exchange. Like Nano's I, on more Nano, Litecoin, Stellar, Ripple. Right. Okay. Like these are well, all on major exchanges. So okay. I I question that choice he, but he did come he yeah. did do a big mea culpa and, and did this big post about all the different companies that he likes that are right projects that just, are being built on sv i just wanted to round out like his so he switched over to using bsv to pay his employees it worked for him i'm not saying it was the best option but it worked for him and then and then when the craig wright drama blew up even more he was like screw this this is bullshit bsv is possibly a scam because of this guy yeah and then he became very anti-bsv and then kind of started tweeting about how great it was like it's in my opinion he's the he's the perfect guest for this show because we are like trying to do that we're trying to figure out crypto we are yeah. crypto curious yeah. like we're not we've called ourselves skeptics in the past but we're not actually skeptical we want to see this work and we want to find out the solution and we want to figure out what crypto is useful for. Well, we're just, I mean, I, I, I'd love to say like keyword crypto where we play devil's advocate because most people don't have money to lose in this game of crypto. And so devil's advocate. And, yeah. and as you and I being, being kind of like quote unquote starving artists, we don't have the ability to like, you know, test out lightning and lose three Bitcoin. Oops. <laughs> You, yeah, you know it was I mean, still in we, beta. It's like, fuck you. I can't afford to lose that kind of money. I can't afford to lose, you know, one-tenth of one Bitcoin. Yeah. We're the early adopters that are trying to find the bugs. Um, and, but like, yeah, I mean, early adopters usually have to eat dirt. And and so we're, we're trying to eat some dirt for you, I yeah. guess, is what we're trying to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, or at least just ask the questions that people, I mean, if we get if we get another bull run, I mean, get ready for the morons, yeah. man. Like, yeah. they're just going to come in droves, and then they're going to play devil's advocate whenever you say something that goes against their investment strategy. Exactly. Like, and I'm, I'm never going to do that. I mean... I, I when I came into crypto, it was during a, the beginning of a bull market, and I was saying negative things about it. Michael called me the bear. That's where this <laughs> podcast came from. It was Michael and the bear, just because I wanted. I mean, you want to be I, convinced. I you want to be beaten over the head, and that's good. I want. I want to be convinced, and I haven't been convinced yet. And so, yeah, that's where we are. So, Craig Wright. <laughs> well, so let's talk about Can't this huge me. BSV bull run right now. Okay. Because some, some people are I calling think. it a pump and dump. Some guy on Twitter posted this thing that I, I retweeted saying that he thinks that it's a complete scam, this bull yeah. run. Yeah. Dan Held is had that kind of viral tweet that ran around. Yeah. Do you want to explain it? Because you could probably explain it better than me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Before we start talking about reasons for 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 a cryptocurrency to be going up in value, I want to to state first that I don't actually believe that, <laughs> I don't believe that the price has anything to do with anything that's going on in the world. Like part of me thinks that it's just whales pumping, pumping and dumping basically. But if we have to attach stories and narratives to this stuff, which is really fun to do, this is the way some people think it's going to go. Yeah. Is that like there is, Craig Wright is trying to Craig Wright and everybody in BSV is trying to exit scam. So like how to do that? Like, well, you're going to say so this he was supposed to be delivered the private keys, which he's going to use to show the world in the court of law that he actually has the money. He has the bitcoins, the one million bitcoins. And 
So, so this is all just a big, um, a big display. He's not actually getting anything. He's not. It doesn't actually have the private keys to the, you know, to anything from the Genesis block. He doesn't actually have that. What they're doing now is pumping the price to generate interest in what he's doing, so he can do some sort of like magician, like, um, you know, like look over here while I steal your wallet or whatever. Basically, this is just a big way for them to crash the price and get out with more money than they came into it. That is like... Oh, see, mine, mine's different. The, oh, yeah? Yeah. Let's hear it. Um, so he was saying... Okay, I'm trying to... I can't find the tweet, so I'm going to... I'm, I'm just going to, like, spitball a TLDR about it. Something about... They run... They can choose... So it's Calvin Ayers, I guess. So he can choose which chain to to mine, Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin um, SV. And so the liquidity is so low. They somebody found um, like the highest exchange. It was using like ten dollars, but it had a billion dollars worth of worth of transactions. With, the, with only a ten dollar base, so they were just sending it back and forth, back and forth, back and oh, forth. Oh, right, you're talking about the possible wash trading to create. So yeah, yeah, that's that's good. But yeah. they were doing that, and then I forget exact something about like them. They were mining Bitcoin Cash to a certain point, and then once it hit some weird hash rate, and they got to the same level as Bitcoin Cash, that's and it and it passed it for a second, then it immediately dropped because they had to switch back to SV to be more profitable. And it was this whole weird thing of like, they were literally doing it just to pump the price, but and they were using the Bitcoin Cash chain to do it, to mine on that chain to do it. And then once it became more worth more than Bitcoin Cash, it was no longer profitable, so they had to switch back. And that's why they said it'll never breach Bitcoin Cash's market cap for that reason for more than like a few hours or a day, because the only way you can get that high is to use the Bitcoin Cash, like mine on that chain for a while to do it. And so it was just this really weird esoteric thing. But after like 50 tweets, I was like, holy shit, this, this makes a lot of sense. And, and, and then it's like it passed, B, it passed hmm. Bitcoin Cash and then within a day it dropped back down. And so it, it all, and he said it was going to happen. And then as soon as it did, it happened right away. And I was just like, oh, hmm. wow. Um, I need to find the tweet and link about it because it was it was a very interesting. Um, yeah, well, idea. Uh, I mean, I have I have the the tweet where Dan Held is is talking. It's it's just in audio form, so I'll just I'll throw that in at the end of this episode or something. Okay, perfect. Um, because it is kind of cool. Um, yep, Bitcoin SV is sitting right now at number five below Bitcoin Cash. It's down by like it's below it by ten dollars in price and about. A uh, hundred million dollars in market cap. Of course, let's also. <laughs> this is how deep this shit goes. Yeah, we can't believe anything that's on CoinMarketCap.com. Yeah, like you just what you like. Here's the big problem with crypto is that you got to put trust in something, and and like, okay, so if the values can't be trusted on a website like this, then who the fuck knows? Like wash trading, sure price manipulation um of course like i mean we're just trying to assign a narrative to this crazy price move yeah. so yeah probably some kind of wash trading probably some kind of you know just pump thing you know accumulating bitcoin so they can just dump it into bitcoin sv to get some sort of attention to make it look like there's some sort of action on this Craig Wright front. Yeah. I don't know. And then he was like selling it into Tether or something like that. It was just, it was, oh, it's so, it's just, so apparently everyone on Twitter is saying use CoinGecko now because that's a little more, but then even that could be a meme. They could be paid, yeah. people paid by CoinGecko. And it's totally. just like, who knows at this point? So, yeah. You really have to be skeptical of everything, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, Play devil's advocate. Every time somebody gives you a piece of information, play, play devil's advocate. Not necessarily out loud. Just do it in your head and be like, yeah. what does this person have to gain by convincing me to use their website or to trust their information or, or, or. 
most of the time, I think most of the time, <laughs> I don't want to give fake news, but most of the time, <laughs> always, <laughs> pretty much always, shit happens the opposite of what people are talking about and saying in crypto. It's like, like a good a good indicator that the price is going to go up is when everyone's saying it's going to go down. Like that's just the way it is yeah. in crypto, it seems. And of course, there's always going to be a few people saying, "Oh, price is going to go up." No one actually knows what the fuck the price is going to do, except the whales that are actually ma- manipulating the price. Exactly. And even they are in competition. So, you know, uh, this new Charles's new podcast, crypto is depressing. <laughs> Bryce Weiner said this is going to trigger the bull market. It's very possible that at, at the bottom here we've got a show called Crypto is Depressing. This is like we're going to be talking about how terrible Bitcoin is and how it's going to crash and all this stuff. Yeah. And that's probably when it'll take off. <laughs> and when everybody hates Bitcoin SV and everybody hates Craig Wright, well, I don't know if it's good investment advice, but... Usually when everybody is pointing in one direction, things go the opposite way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and who knows? I mean, my thing is, what I always try to remember is it, green candles trigger endorphins in the body. And we've talked about this in the past, and it makes us want to buy. And it makes us, f- like, you know, get FOMO and blah, blah. And so... I have a I have a sheet taped against my w- wall right behind my my monitor that says, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> "What is it doing on the four hour? What uh, is it doing okay. on the daily? Wow. What is it well, doing on the weekly?" Yourself. Because yeah. it's so easy to get caught up in the moment, and then you pull back, and you're like, "Oh shit, no!" On the daily, it's still in a downtrend, and on the weekly, it's in a disastrous downtrend. So yeah. don't get caught up in some you know, six hour pump or even just a one day pump. Like, of course, wait yeah. for, wait for corrections, wait for. Oh man, we've played so many games with it. Like I've done the thing where I've, I've inverted the colors. So the green candles are nice. red and the red candles are green. Cause like, I'm thinking like, you know, it used to be like, I, you know, we all do stupid shit like that. Yeah. Like, um, but yeah, you invert the candles. So, or, you know, we use moving averages to tell us if, you know, if the trend is up or down or, or whatever. I guess do whatever you got to do. But but uh, Michael is 100% right that when things are going up, you get that dopamine rush. And that was something I remember. Um, uh, what's his name? Oh, shoot, man. Another YouTuber. Uh, was his name Charles, too? No, it was... It was the, um, God damn it, I'm going to forget his name. He was like one of the biggest YouTubers in 2017, like one of the smart guys too. Um, uh, you remember later. You remember later. Coin Mastery. Coin oh, Mastery, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Coin Mastery was one of the first people in that moment who said, look at this parabola, that is all dopamine. Yeah. And I didn't really understand what he meant when he was saying at that time, because when the price is going up, part of your brain is thinking, maybe this is the new normal. Maybe it's going to go up 10 times more than this. Like everything in your brain is telling you the opposite of what is rational. Yeah. Right after a huge green candle, usually comes a big red candle. So like, it's crazy that, that we're like heroin addicts, basically. I mean, you got to remember, like, this is just the new casino and the casinos always win. Like the casino always wins. And so when you have $10,000 in front of you of winnings, they're they're They know the odds are that you're going to lose it all in the next hour. Yeah. That you're not going to be smart. You're not going to take profits. You're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to, they know this Yeah. because, because of the natural drug coursing through your fucking veins. Hmm. It's, it so. is and money is a nasty drug or what what your own idea of your wealth does to your to the chemical balance in your body is pretty nuts. Yeah. And we know, man, in December of twenty seventeen, the world of crypto was just 
insane. Absolutely nuts. Was, yeah. And then, of course, two months later, it was the most wretched place <laughs> ever. No, that's what alt season started. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean that's when what you I made three hundred dollars on Verge. <laughs> I remember. I yeah. I remember when like I logged on to like some stupid Facebook group and I said like, and somebody had put, "Is now a good time to invest in Tron?" And it was like <laughs> a thousand replies that are like fuck tron that piece of shit it's garbage scam blah 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 um just like okay and that was a good time to buy tron by the way yeah yeah <laughs> if you're gonna buy an altcoin <laughs> i i actually now that i mentioned tron it's kind of interesting because tron was supposed to be this cryptocurrency that that did a lot of like multimedia shit like you could play games on it and had you know it was going to be the new netflix or whatever now they own the BitTorrent. now they own BitTorrent, and justin sun's is master marketer and now everything on their platform is just a way to gamble and yeah. lose money yeah but does that delegitimize it at all because i mean the internet in the 90s was a lot of gambling and a lot of porn yeah but he could, he could also be playing to his audience i, I mean i said this you know i've, I've I have a lot of Chinese friends. I've, I've worked for Chinese people in, in New York. And, you know, we'd get off work and they would all go down to Chinatown and, and it would be open. There was no shutdown uh, day and it was just casino right. after casino after casino. And all the Chinese people would go there and lose all the money they made that night working at the restaurant. Yeah, and that was just the so normal racist. culture there. It just so, sounds so racist to me. <laughs> well, no, I mean it's just like it's. You it's, might be right, but it's like yeah. Um, but I mean, like that's. I mean, and, it, and maybe it's an American Chinese thing. But like, I've people I talk to say no. Chinese people love to gamble out there. It's just it's just it's like they love to the game. They love the excitement of the game. I feel like buying BitTorrent was a really smart move, though, because that's not gambling. That is related to serious piracy and and uh, and. And peer to peer, that is the peer to peer uh, file sharing network. So I feel and like you've never paid for it. Never paid for what? For 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 BitTorrent, for right? BitTorrent? No, I mean. So why would you need a coin, a token for it? I here I, we go, JJ no, Schillen BitTorrent. No, I am. Not, I don't mean to say that. It was a it was a smart move. I just mean a, from a branding perspective. <laughs> oh, I'm not oh, okay. About. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. But that's another one. It's just like okay. Well, what's the? Why does it need a token? BitTorrent's no, been running for ten token. years, twenty years. Nothing. For how nothing long? Needs, Five years, ten years. I don't think anything needs a token unless you want to. And this is going to tie back to the beginning of this episode. Unless you want to remove privacy from it <laughs> unless you want to monitor what's going on a little bit better because that's what crypto's for monitoring yeah. the masses <laughs> well i mean if you have a token for something then it's easy to see what that's being exchanged for so i mean that's one one reason is yeah unless i mean the the, the cookies that we use on on our websites are essentially like little tokens that we trade back and forth that have little metadata yeah that allow us to to that allows the it allows our computers to remember where we were on that website or whatever. I imagine that BitTorrent is going to be kind of the same thing or something like that. Yeah. I have no idea. But yeah. All right. Yeah, got to wrap right. up. We got to be done. All right, let us know if you have questions related to privacy in crypto or Chinese people crypto. gambling cuz <laughs> cuz white yes. cuz white Michael <laughs> has all the answers white, about that. <laughs> white Michael knows everything about Chinese gamblers <laughs> and um and I, what do I know everything about? I know everything about shilling um, BitTorrent. <laughs> I know everything about the fee markets. That's, That's right. Yeah, Bitcoin about. fee markets. <laughs> I know everything about Bitcoin fee markets. I'd love to talk about that, but yeah. we'll talk about it next week because it's a good story. At, <laughs> at keyword crypto, www.keywordcrypto.com. Check out our Patreon. Um, what else? What else do we need to talk about? Oh, who's going to be the? Oh, so we've been doing songs, new songs by new artists to open the show. Um, yeah, new music, and we will have that on there. We don't. We never know who it's going to be until we actually hit publish. So, just yeah, please hit us up if you uh, if you know artists. I mean, I would. I love to find artists that are not on Spotify and oh. like just do stuff that's straight to YouTube or whatever. Because YouTube's better than Spotify? Totally. It's a, totally better. Is it? At okay. Least, 
I mean, Spotify, you have to go through a distributor to even get your shit on there. Uh, I, don't okay. want, I don't want somebody having to decide what is and isn't music. Gotcha. At least anybody can post to YouTube. I thought anybody could post. So, so, so yeah. So, if you don't know, yeah. JJ's the music guy. He does it for a living. So, if he, yeah. if he says it's true, just it's probably okay. To, it's probably safe to assume it's true. Um, <laughs> but it's good to I know. Mean, we just, I didn't know that. We... We uh, they, they both don't pay artists what what artists deserve, but yeah. at least Spotify you you know it's or SoundCloud is cool, but I like I don't like it when you've got to go through all these middlemen just to get your music onto a platform. That's just bullshit to me. Yeah, um, and then everyone buys into it thinking it's the only way to listen to music. Exactly, so. like me. So yeah, like if asshole you know Michael. artists, if you know people making cool music, then let us know, and we will try to fe- feature them. Yeah, or we will feature absolutely. Them. Cool. All right, everybody. All right, everybody. See you next week. Uh-huh.